Pluto is this far-off weird dwarf planet that used to be considered one of the main planets but recently well-known space. Guys Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michioku said something surprising that got everyone talking about Pluto again they think it might crash into Neptune how could that even happen and what would it mean if it did is this some super rare space thing or is there something else going on with these two planets let's look at what could cause Pluto and Neptune to collide Pluto this former planet now a dwarf planet because of its weird orbit is still pretty interesting to space scientists these scientists are saying that Pluto's path is getting way too close to Neptune's Tyson and Kaku are warning us that they might smash into each other which could be bad news for Earth I mean how is that even possible well Pluto's path around the Sun is strange it takes 248 years to go around once which means it hasn't even made one full trip since we found it in 1930 plus its path isn't a circle like most planets it's more of an oval and it's tilted compared to the other planets what's also wild is that Pluto's path crosses Neptune's for about 20 years of its orbit Pluto is actually closer to the Sun than Neptune is so why haven't they hit each other yet it's because of how the gravity of other planets pulls on then people started studying Pluto's orbit right after we saw it at first. They didn't get it. It was different from all the other planets and it crosses. Neptune's path, the only reason Pluto's orbit stays steady is because space is complicated. It's tricky to figure out how three things like Pluto, Neptune, and the sun move and pull on each other with gravity. It's like trying to guess where they'll go based on where they start and how they pull on each other with Pluto. It shows the paths of Neptune and the sun's gravity all working together in a crazy way, something called vibration. Together with the VSS's weird thing keeps things in order, space experts say AU. Vibration is what keeps all the planets in their paths with Pluto and Neptune. It means that when Pluto crosses Neptune's path, it's far out to the side of Neptune. This keeps them from running into each other latitude vibration is how much a planet moves up and down in its path for Pluto when it gets close to Neptune it's way above Neptune's path that gives it an extra bit of safety also there's the VSS's thing it is named after Vonipal Kai an LV who studied how things move in space it's about how Pluto Neptune and the Sun pull on each other with gravity it helps us get why Pluto's path is so weird even if Pluto's path seems all over the place this thing keeps it steady over time all this keeps Pluto's orbit safe so it doesn't hit Neptune or get lost in space looking at this helps us understand Pluto other far off worlds and their stars back in the 1980s computer tests showed that Pluto's path is actually a bit wild tiny changes can because big differences over millions of years. But these quirky things about Pluto's path keep it steady for a really long time just fending off. Disaster newer computer tests aid us in understanding how big planets like Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn affect Pluto's path. Neptune and Pluto are connected in a special way for every two trips Pluto makes around the Sun. Neptune makes three that helps keep Pluto steady. But Jupiter's gravity helps a lot too. And even Saturn does a little bit these. Tests tell us that Jupiter's gravity all by itself is enough to keep Pluto on a steady path for billions of years. Seriously, Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn all team up to keep Pluto safe in space. Without all of this, our solar system would be messy planets like Pluto could crash into each other or get kicked out of their paths, which would affect other. Planets figuring out Pluto's orbit is so very important. Pluto is just one example of how crazy orbits can still be steady because of gravity and how planets move it just goes to show that we need to keep watching and studying these things to get a better idea of where we are in the universe checking far off space bodies causes us to face the unstable nature of space bodies Pluto's orbit says it all. 
scientists use computer models to learn how Pluto moves. These models use math to copy how Pluto and other space bodies pull on each other by using tiny changes in the model scientists view how even little changes can cause Pluto to go to a very different place. The models back in the 1980s showed something so incredibly interesting about Pluto's path even. Though it stays fairly steady the way it moves is unpredictable. If you begin with a tiny difference in where Pluto is or how fast it's moving, its path ends up looking very different over many years. But even with all this mess, Pluto gets to stay steady for billions of years guessing space events like those associated with Pluto is such a difficult task. What makes the task more difficult is how unpredictable. These space bodies are these models need the right beginning details for the job to be as close as possible to what will happen. Any small issue can cause such different results to come from the models. That is an issue that scientists have in their work. Pluto stands as a reminder of what scientists face in their work. The gravitational effects of the other planets will give others an insider's view of what makes up the solar system, the position of each planet, has effects that can spread far, affecting the path of space. Bodies, so why are some astrophysicists expressing their anxiety? Tyson has a view on Pluto. Tyson talks about how scientists learn about space shines, a light on why it is a must to keep. Learning about space, he has futuristic views that help spread science to the Public both Tyson and Kaku agree that space has much it wants people to see. From it, most scientists do agree that Pluto and Neptune are not set to crash into each other anytime soon as they stay in place. Scientists will still keep a close watch on these bodies to study how they move. Okay, so Pluto's that dwarf planet way. Out there right, it used to be a planet. But things changed anyway some big name. Astrophysicists like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michioku have people talking again. They brought up this idea that Pluto might crash into Neptune sounds crazy, right? But how could that even happen? What would it mean are we seeing? Something weird happen in space or is there more to it? Let's check it out. Pluto's orbit is just weird. It takes 248 years to go around the sun once plus it goes around in a weird squash circle not a neat circle like the other planets, and it's tilted here's the crazy part. Pluto's path crosses. Neptune's sometimes for about 20 years. Pluto's even closer to the sun than Neptune. So why haven't they crashed well other? Planets are pulling on them when Pluto crosses Neptune's road it's far away. From Neptune they don't line up also. Pluto sort of bobs up and down so it misses Neptune there's also this thing called the VSS's Thin Gummy it's named. After some folks who studied how stuff moves in space, it basically means that Pluto's path is weird, but it's steady in the long run. Back in the 80s, scientists did some computer stuff and found out that Pluto's path is pretty chaotic tiny. Changes could make a huge difference over millions of years, but Pluto's orbit is stable-ish for the long-haul Neptune and Jupiter help keep Pluto in check for. Every two laps Pluto does Neptune does. Three, it's like they're in sync Jupiter. Also pulls just enough to keep things. Stable and Saturn helps a bit without. All this the solar system would be a. Mess stuff would be crashing into each. Other all the time or getting thrown out. Of orbit it is really important to. Understand Pluto's orbit even though. Pluto's orbit seems weird it's actually. Pretty balanced it shows how space is complex and we need to keep watching these things to get a better understanding scientists have been using computers to figure out how Pluto moves. They can change little things in the computer to see how it affects Pluto's path. It turns out that even small changes can matter a lot predicting. Space stuff is hard especially with chaotic orbits like Pluto's we can't be. Sure what's going to happen way in the future but we're learning more all the time understanding how the big planets pull on Pluto also helps us understand 
More general stuff it shows how everything in the solar system is connected so why the recent collision. Talk Tyson and Kaku both look at Pluto and space in the following way Tyson is always reminding us that we're learning new stuff all the time just because Pluto isn't a planet anymore doesn't mean it's not interesting Kaku on the other hand is all about the future we need to watch space carefully and use computers to figure stuff out so we can know what might happen both Tyson and Kaku agree that space is full of surprises we need to keep exploring and learning most scientists agree that Pluto and Neptune are fine for now since there is this balance that keeps them apart but with that said it is important to monitor them in case there are changes even though a crash is very unlikely it shows why we need to keep researching and watching space getting better tech and computer programs help scientists get more certain info so we know about space Tyson and Kaku want to continually explore with flexible minds this Potential impact shows us the complex stuff in our solar system and is a reminder that there is still a lot to know we should keep trying to figure out. More studying Pluto's orbit helps us think about the solar system as a whole. All the planets' moons and dwarf planets are connected. This makes predicting what will happen really complicated even. Though Pluto seems chaotic forces keep pretty stable but any unexpected. Change could mess things up, that's why. We need to keep watching these distant worlds, they're saying there's a chance. Pluto might run into. Neptune sounds crazy, right? How could that even happen and what would it do? Let's check out why people are even thinking about Pluto bashing into. Another planet Pluto's orbit is super strange. It goes around the sun once every 248 years, that's nuts, and instead of going. In a neat circle like the other planets, it's more of an oval shape plus it's tilted compared to everything else. Here's the kicker Pluto crosses. Neptune's path for about 20 years of its orbit, it's actually closer to the sun than Neptune is so why haven't they crashed already? Good question. Basically other planets mess with Pluto's gravity back when they first saw Pluto astronomers were scratching there. Heads about its crazy orbit it wasn't. Like anything else the fact that it crosses Neptune's path just made it even. Weirder but somehow Pluto's orbit stays. Stable it's like a really messy dance. Where everything still works out it's an example of the three body problem where you're trying to figure out how three things like Pluto, Neptune and the Sun move around while pulling on each other. What keeps Pluto from smashing into Neptune basically when Pluto crosses. Neptune's orbit it's always really far. Away from. Neptune plus it's usually way above. Neptune's orbit so they don't get close. Enough to cause a problem there's also. Something called the VSSK oscillation. That's how scientists describe the way. Pluto's orbit kind of wobbles smoothly. Even though it looks weird all that. Keeps Pluto from crashing into Neptune or flying off into space researchers, figured out that the planets are pulling on each other back in the 80s computer. Simulations showed that Pluto's orbit is actually pretty wild tiny changes could make a big difference over millions of years, but Pluto's orbit manages to stay stable for ages and ages. Other tests show Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn all help keep Pluto safe Neptune and Pluto are linked in a specific way, and Jupiter's gravity is strong enough to keep Pluto stable for billions of years without all these things our solar system would be way more chaotic planets, could crash into each other or get thrown out of the system understanding. Pluto's orbit helps us understand how space works. Pluto shows how even orbits that seem unstable can stay balanced because of gravity and how things move. Exploring space means dealing with stuff that doesn't always make sense right away and Pluto's orbit is a great example. It's a good example of orbital chaos, meaning tiny changes in where Pluto starts can change where it ends up. Way in the future computer simulations really help scientists understand Pluto's movements. They can change small. 
things in the simulations and see how it messes with Pluto's path even with all. The things that keep Pluto steady, its orbit can still be pretty wild, but it stays stable for billions of years. Predicting stuff in space is hard, especially with chaotic orbits like Pluto's we can use computers, but there will be errors in the beginning so we don't know where they'll end up at times. When trying to predict the future, the fact that bigger planets affect Pluto's orbit shows that everything in the solar system is connected. So why are Tyson and Kaku talking about Pluto and Neptune now? Tyson offers his views on the solar system. He thinks changing Pluto from a planet to a dwarf planet was a learning experience. Tyson thinks that the more we find out about space, the more questions. We ask Kaku has a different take. He focuses on how unpredictable space can be. He thinks we need to watch stuff closely and use computers to figure out what might happen a crash between Pluto and Neptune would show how wild space can be. Kaku wants us to consider what might happen if something bad happens. The better we understand space, the better we can prepare for it, both Tyson and Kaku think space is all about learning new things even though we know a lot we need to keep exploring and using technology the idea of Pluto and Neptune. Crashing is a good example that show how important space really is most. Scientists agree that Neptune and Pluto won't crash because of how they move in. Gravity but the planets are still monitored and studied just in case even. Though a crash is unlikely it shows why. We need to keep researching space better. Telescopes and computers will help us understand our solar system Tyson and Kaku both agree that we need to explore space and learn as much as we can while Neptune and Pluto's relationship is interesting.